Hi, in this tutorial, we are building a full stack TypeScript application, which means that we are not only covering the front end, not only covering the back end, but I will show you how to do the both and how to connect them and then how to design the database, how to deploy the apps. So you have a full understanding of the whole cycle in building a, let's say, typical web application. In this episode, we are talking about type inference. And I will try something different. So instead of coding, I will talk about some concepts and I will give you some personal stories to give you this kind of like a background so that you can have a deeper understanding into certain things. So type inference is a pretty important concept. And one of the comments inspired me to record that, to clarify a little bit, you know, my approach and how I think you should write your TypeScript code in this case. I was introduced to type inference for the first time in uh, 2005. I was mid for my computer science degree. We had this course called Compilers, which is a pretty standard course in computer science curriculum. The idea is that you have to write a compiler. So we had to write a compiler either for Pascal or C. The only difference in this course was that we had to use this kind of like a little known strange programming language, which was OCaml. So OCaml is, uh, comes from this uh, family of uh, ML languages. And when I say ML, it has nothing to do with machine learning. It's the same acronym, but these are two different things. So when someone says ML, it may mean, nowadays it probably means machine learning, but it may also be a reference to uh, ML family of programming languages. So you have two big families of programming languages. One is ML and the other one Lisp. And those two programming uh, families are the oldest ones, which is kind of funny because at the same time, they are not very well known, yet they are the, the oldest um, programming languages. So if you want to have a deeper understanding of uh, programming, I encourage you to learn OCaml. This language has many interesting features. I won't be focusing on this right now because there is a lot to cover, but one of them is type inference. So type inference means that you try to build your compiler the way that it helps you to infer the types, which means that it will guess the types for you. This is like uh, being explicit and being implicit. If you are explicit, you need to spend additional time on explaining certain things. So if you are explicit in programming, it means that you are you know, spending some additional time to provide some information, for example, for the reader or for the compiler, and you are you know, adding the types everywhere you can. And if you are implicit, it means that you rely on the compiler to guess the types. So this is where it gets tricky. And this is what languages like OCaml try to promote, which is that you can be implicit so you can spend less time writing types, yet the, the compiler, the programming language, let's say, is smart enough to guess the types. So you have the types as you would have being explicit, but at the same time, you don't have to spend that much time of figuring out uh, them on your own. You can let the machine do the work for you. And TypeScript nowadays specifically has type inference. And the idea is that if you write TypeScript, you should rely on type inference as much as you can, which means that you shouldn't write the types where you don't have to. So in other words, it means that you should try, which is maybe it may sound funny, but you should try to make your code look like JavaScript and not TypeScript. And uh, of course, TypeScript compiler. So, and this is where it gets even more interesting because OCaml has, uh, the compiler has a very sophisticated way and to infer the types and TypeScript doesn't have that, not because it's something which is difficult, but they had some rules in place when they were designing TypeScript not to interfere too much with JavaScript. They had some principles that they used to design TypeScript. And those principles somehow 
prevent them from adding certain you know things so that we, we have a better type inference okay but that's a, a little bit uh, abstract i imagine so let's see that in our code so there was specifically one uh, commenter one person that asked me why i shouldn't type t on the line 99 with the task so as you can see when i hover over this variable i see that the TypeScript compiler inferred the type. This is task. The compiler knows that. You don't have to, you know, write it. Um, you don't have to say t task because you need to spend additional time on that, and then you have to, you know, remember about this and then manage this code. So if you just write t, because tasks already has the of the type task, the compiler can infer, so it can guess the type of T based on the usage here. So you don't have to do that. So another example is here, the line 66. So here I did something which is not uh, idiomatic, I would say. So when you are doing assignment declaration, you don't have to write the type. You shouldn't write. It's a good practice not to write the type when doing it this way. Because if you hover, you will see that the compiler again can infer the type. It can guess the type. It, it knows what it is because you are assigning a string. And this is the string. It's going to get uh, pretty tricky because if, you, if I would write the task like that, and then in the next line, I would assign the, uh, the string to it, the compiler is not smart enough to know that the type of new task is string. As you can see, a type which means that compiler wasn't able to infer the type. And we should avoid those situations. So if you write it in two lines like that, uh, it won't be able to infer. So in this case, you would have to be explicit and you would have to provide the type. But normally, this way of writing is more uh, natural. So when you can write it this way, you should uh, prefer this way of writing the code. So the declaration assignment and the, the type is then inferred. And this looks like JavaScript, but yet we have the, you know, the benefits of TypeScript because everything is still typed. It's, it gets tricky when we are talking about um, objects, you know. So if I have an object and I assign it, it has type empty uh, object literal. And now if I, for example, type, I you know, field, let's say, I want to assign something to this object under a specific key. So it won't complain about this situation. It treats this object as an open container. At the same time, if you write object field, using this alternative syntax in JavaScript, it will complain about uh, missing field property. So this is kind of like a, a trade-off or a compromise rather between treating it as an object-oriented programming language, which of course JavaScript is not, and treating it as a, as a map. To be more specific in this case, when we have non-primitive types like string or number, which means that we have objects, we need to provide the types. And this is why we did those interfaces. So here, if I provided an interface, let's say a dummy, and this dummy type will have a field of type number. So it will have a, a field named field, which as a value would have a number. So now if I uh, provide a type here, as you can see, both those assignments work now as expected. It knows that this object has this field um, and it knows it, it's um, a number. So if I wrote something like a string here, there's a problem. There is one more specific case and it is the, the function signature. So. Generally speaking, TypeScript is unable to infer the types when for the parameters of your functions. If you're writing a function, something like add task, 
and you have provide some parameters, you would need to always um, provide the types. Generally speaking, the idea is that you should have enough knowledge about the types and how it works, how TypeScript compiler works behind the scenes to avoid writing types. Now we need to avoid writing types, so to speak. And so you need to remember that only function declarations require explicit types. And in most other cases, you can avoid writing that. Another interesting uh, situation is here with the reactive. So for example, if I remove that state, it's still okay. And let's say I add a new field, a boo field with uh, the value one, and we have no problems here. And this is our state. It infers this from uh, this declaration, but we don't want to do that this way because we know that our state should always have, should only have a new task and tasks. So now if I provide, I'm explicit and I provide a, a type to this uh, invocation, you can see I have an error because this boo type doesn't exist on the state. So we have this additional constraints here and you should try to apply them whenever you can. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I wanted to clarify that topic. Avoid writing types in TypeScript. Rely on the compiler. Leverage, use type inference as much as you can to your advantage. Because this way you will have the benefits of using types. At the same time, you don't have to spend this additional time on writing types. And if you are more interested in types and specifically in type inference, I encourage you to check OCaml, which will give you some additional um, you know, insights about how this works. So yeah, we haven't wrote a lot of code in this episode, but I hope it was still informative. Also, let me know what you think about this type of uh, episodes when I'm trying to you know, explain certain things without writing too much code. Do you like it or not? And yeah, that's all. We can now move forward and continue writing this task management application. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.